After the Second World War, the Japanese were very restricted to what they could actually manufacture. And so they looked at the market and they started making toys. And their Japanese toys, very collectible today, made in the 40s and 50s. But by the 1950s, they realised there was not much money in these little tin plates. So they looked at sewing machines and the Japanese started to produce sewing machines. And they really got into their swing during the 60s, 70s. By the 1980s, they were producing amazing machines. Machines that knock spots off just about every machine today. And this is a definitely Benina quality. And you can just see in tiny, tiny little lettering underneath there, like little ant footprints made in Japan. And you don't need to sell this machine. This machine is over 40 years old now. But I'm just going to show you something. This is horrible, cheap um, nylon heading tape. And this machine is just going to run straight through it as if it wasn't there. And that's the extraordinary thing. And and not only that, the it's effortless. It will do over a thousand stitches a minute through this sort of thickness. And look at the clearance. I can't even chain, get to the needle on some new machines and they come up with all these fancy, oh, it's a high arm and it's a long arm and it's all this and that, it's a quilting. These old bangers, which you pick up for 50 quid on eBay, just go through this stuff. Look, I'm just gonna fold it over double now, see what it does. I haven't tried this, so we're just going to see. That's going through eight layers. Look, look at the thickness of that. It's just gone through all of that as if it wasn't there. So if you're looking for a super, super quality machine that is going to make you smile every time you use it, check out one of the 80s and 90s Japanese machines. And wow, you'll never go wrong. Bye for now.